Hi, this is Laura Chappell, and I want to show you the new GOIP endpoint location mapping service that's available with Wireshark, starting with Wireshark version 1.2. The first thing we'll need to do is go get the GOIP database files. So I've gone online to www.maxmind.com and here we can see there's the banner for GOIP, Geolocation Technology. I'll click for more information. And on the right hand side I'll see that there's an area for free and open source GOIP databases and services. They have two listed here, GeoLite Country and GeoLite City. I'll choose GeoLite Country. When I enter this page on the left hand side, there are actually three database files that I want to get. The GeoLite Country file, the GeoLite City file, and the GeoLite ASN or Autonomous System Number file. I'm going to download all three of those compressed files and then I'm going to extract them into a directory. I'll be pointing Wireshark to that directory in just a moment. Here's the directory that I created. It's c colon backslash laura backslash documents backslash goip. And here are the three compressed files. Here are the three uncompressed versions of those files. It's probably best if you put all the goip database files in the same directory. It makes it pretty easy to configure with Wireshark. Now I'm ready to go over to Wireshark and configure it to look in this directory for my goip database files. Remember, this feature isn't available until Wireshark version 1.2, so if you haven't upgraded to that version, now's the time to do it. I'm going to select Edit and Preferences. The GOIP database files are pointed at through the Name Resolutions area in Preferences. I've selected Name Resolution, and on the bottom, there's the GOIP database directories Edit button. I'll click that button, and I want to add a new path name. I'm going to basically point Wireshark to the directory where I uncompress those GOIP database files. So I'll select New and I'll enter in my path name. I'll click OK. Now Wireshark will look in this directory for my GOIP database files. I'll say OK, OK again, and at this point, I want to restart Wireshark. I'll use my NVIDIA adapter. And now I'll toggle over to my browser. And here at the top you can see I've pointed this to www.australia.gov.au. I'll go ahead and hit that website. And while I was doing this, Wireshark was capturing the traffic in the background. Now I'll toggle back over to Wireshark. Here I can see there's my web browsing traffic going out to the Australian website. Now, while this is running, I'll select Statistics, Endpoints. Now we can see at the bottom of the Endpoint window that there's a Map button, but it's grayed out because GOIP location requires that we're looking at IP addresses, not Ethernet addresses. And that's what we're looking at by default when we open up this window. I'll select the IPv4 tab. And now on the right hand side you can see some columns that we didn't have before in earlier versions of Wireshark and that would have shown up blank or have not been there at all if we didn't set up GOIP location. And now I'm ready to map the IP addresses that Wireshark sees. I'll click the map button and you'll see that there's a note saying that internet connection is required. Now here's the map of the IP addresses. There on the left hand side if I click on one of these I can see there is my autonomous system number and there it is for Citrix Online in Galetta, California and the number of packets and bytes. I can click on the other diamond shape and these are the pinpoints in the map of the different IP addresses that it could map for me. There's Comcast in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and there's my target in Australia. Now I'm going to move this map and center in on that target. Be aware that there may be more than one map pinpoint, and you may want to zoom in. 
In this case, you can see that I was actually communicating with two IP addresses that mapped to the Canberra, Australia region. You'll also see that at the top, I'm actually opening up a file called ipmap.html that's sitting in my temp directory. In that directory, I'll also have an ipmap.txt file. That is basically a tab-separated file that contains the IP details needed to build the map. Although this is an experimental feature at this time in Wireshark, it's really a nice feature to have. 